Welcome to The Storied Outdoors, a podcast somewhere between Lewis and Tolkien and Lewis and Clark, finding clarity in the stories we tell and the adventures that shape us. My name is Brian Gill, and I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Brad Hill. It's so good to be here. We're excited to meet James D. Whitmer, the author of A Year in the Big Old Garden, a collection of children's stories celebrating backyard wildlife. Serves as a managing editor for the storywarren.com. He's a reader, a bird watcher, and a gardener. James loves the outdoors, which means that's why we're happy to have him on the show. Anybody that has a love for the outdoors, and we're thankful you joined us today, James. It is great to be here. Thanks for inviting me in. So, James, uh, for our listeners um, who may not be familiar with the story, Warren, can you tell us a little bit about what that is and, and what you do with them? Uh, Story Warren is a blog or a, an online magazine that was founded by S.D. Smith and uh, a couple of his brothers. The key words, that's not right, the uh, tagline for the website is uh, Kindling Holy Imagination for Kingdom Anticipation. Mm. Um, I like that. And the theme works out in that um, we both run articles that uh, feature works of art, stories, music, things that we think will be encouraging to families who have children and who are coming up in a world where their imagination needs to be fed. Mm -hmm. And the other part, we uh, spend a lot of time uh, talking about why we do that. The idea that for people who pray, thy kingdom come and thy will be done, there has to be a bridge of some sort between mm. what we see, between uh, Sam um, S.D. Smith likes to um, say that it is what it is, is only half the story. <laughs> it, it may be true, um, but we need a bridge to... Uh, what it should be. And so often the, um, the thing that puts feet to faith is an imagination that can, that can look at what Jesus said about his kingdom and say, well, if that's true, then what are, what should we be doing here? And so feeding that imagination, uh, valuing uh, a redeemed imagination in a world um, where it's easier to just use your imagination to escape or to involve indulge um, in destructive behavior is, is something that we, we talk about a lot. Mm. Well, and that's, I love that. And uh, we, we're familiar with um, SD Smith. Um, we met at Hutchmoot uh, in, in 2019 and uh, my children love his books. And uh, I, that's kind of, I guess, my introduction to the story, Warren. And then I, I, I started following you on some social media channels, and I started seeing you're a writer yourself, and you do you you write children's books, and you have other interests in the outdoors with gardening. And um, I just really have been wanting to be a part of of that community, and I really love what you're doing with the story, Warren. Now, how many of those articles there are, are you writing? Are you able to do some writing, or is it just, just the editing or the managing of it? I don't write as much as I used to um, for the story, Warren, um, partly because there's not the need that there was to go. Um, we have a very steady flow of people who are working through the questions or discovering the resources they want to share. Uh, and part of it is that um, I, I find that I'm drawn more and more to saying whatever it is I, I have to say in, in stories. Uh, mm. So, and I, thanks to the community that's grown up there, I, I have the luxury to, and mm. editing is fun. I mean, you get something, all of the miserable work of trying to make, take a ball of string and turn it into fabric is done. And it's just a matter of snipping around the edges. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's good work. Man, what, uh, 
So when we talk about a year in the big old garden at your big old house, what was the driving force behind writing the stories the way that you wrote those stories? Toddlers. Toddlers. <laughs> Simply put, toddlers. Uh, my, my, uh, my three kids are 14, 12, and 10 now. But the first, first couple stories... The first one in the collection, for sure, I think it might even be the first couple that fall in order, um, were made up in a minivan. Uh, <laughs> sometimes waiting for mom to come out of the grocery store. And um, I just needed to do something for the poor kids to help their attention span, help them wait patiently. And when I dug into trying to... Uh, make something up um turns out that what came out came out from from a long time ago back mm. when i grew up reading Thornton burgess and aesop fables and i think there's a little bit of winnie the pooh in there occasionally um, <laughs> we love winnie the pooh over here too oh man nothing wrong with that man my 10 year old boy still wants to play pooh sticks when we get the chance <laughs> but yeah. So, so you've basically taken stories that you were telling your children, <laughs> written them down, illustrated them, compiled them into this this small world based in a garden. Is that am I am I tracking you on that? That's how it started. Yeah. Probably okay. the first three or four of the dozen were that way, mm -hmm. and um, some somehow I got the the gumption to to share them with a couple of people in the story warning team and they said yeah i think you're on to something here and so i started gradually to try to tell them more purposefully mm. um, and it, it's it's several years went by that just every few months i would i would write another one and you know the big old garden is it's uh it's a house surrounded by purposeful plantings, big old mm. trees, flower beds. There's a veg garden out back. Um, but the whole place is kind of, a, I mean, I guess they do it in England all the time, but it's the kind of place that you don't oh, yeah. find so much in a neighborhood anymore. It had to be an old house because usually you, got, you know, we've got a lawn and the garden's over here where it belongs. Everything's clean and neat, <laughs> but you get an old enough house and they, there's just stuff growing all the way around it everywhere. And of course the backyard wildlife loves that kind of thing. Um, so I was surprised that every time I went back there, um, looking for conflict cause you need one for a story. Um, the characters, I mean, squirrels and birds and stuff, it, they had enough room to roam that this stuff happened. And so after a few years, I uh, got it, got it compiled. And what you see is mm. wow. covers It's now. a beautiful book. It, it, is, it is such a beautiful book. And, and the, the illustrations are phenomenal and the stories are so well written. Um, and I love that you have been able to find adventure in, the, in your backyard. You know, so many times we think adventure is out there or, or somewhere not where we've been planted. Um, but the, I think that's a beautiful thing that you were able to to bring out the beauty that is at home. I, I had to find that. I have a bit of an itch. Um, not it's never displayed in travel, but it's been displayed in, in the need for a, a quest or something that mattered. Mm. Um, and I have figured out that um, there are no ordinary places. Mm. Wow, that's and, good. And that means a lot to me. Yeah, that, that brings to mind, uh, I love Eugene Peterson. And uh, Eugene Peterson said, there, there is no place without the possibility of unearthing holiness, he said. Mm. And so, like, we we kind of experienced that during this time of lockdown. We, uh, something I'd been wanting to do for a while was build a, a rebuild my garden. I had a garden for a while and then we got a golden retriever. And, uh, 
she liked the garden too. Uh, and she wanted to dig and help. Um, but it was obviously not very helpful. And, uh, so I kind of gave up for a while, but we, uh, my son and I, we, we put together a little fence and cordoned off a little part where she, my golden retriever couldn't get to, uh, uh, the garden. So we removed the opportunity for that conflict <laughs> as, it, as it were. So things could actually grow. So little hobbitish, I like things that grow, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and that is kind of uh, what it, kind of what it is, whether you're, whether you're making a log cabin in the big woods or whether you're fencing out the golden retriever, there's a, there's an interplay where you, you exert yourself to make a safe place mm. so, that, uh, so that things can flourish. Yes. So um, tell us a little bit about your, your interest with gardening and, and planting things. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have the luxury of having a place at our house to, to have a garden. We have a lot of shade and we have a lot of, I live um, in, in Birmingham in kind of a, a little a more of an urban area. And it's just, but my, my in-laws, they have the, they grab the, the, the vines and the garden and the, the blueberries and blackberries and everything is just, it, it's in its place there. And I love it. And I'm, uh, I feel drawn to that, but tell me about your experience. Maybe, what was your, um, what initially got you in, in interested with the gardening? It started um, with a tiny patch of daylilies outside of our apartment. Hmm. Um, I came home, I, I got an English major and then uh, stayed in a small town, a beautiful small town um, that does not qualify as planning ahead very well. So I was working retail. <laughs> And I came home just, um, just beat from trying to help people decide which television they needed this year. <laughs> and, and I was heading up the steps and my wife, um, who has always loved plants. So that's part of it, but she's always loved plants, um, had a couple of clumps of, of day lilies in some part of the country. They just call them ditch lilies because they'll just grow anywhere that's, that's damp. Well, the thing about the, the day lily is that uh, each bloom lasts for a day and then it shrivels up and it looks like used colored tissue paper. But if you snap those off, then it makes more buds and it keep going and they look better. And so I just stopped and I started snapping off the old ones. And about five minutes in of mindlessly doing what you guess you could call work, I realized that I felt better that I had noticed a bird singing across the street. Mm. Uh, my stress had come down and I got the idea that I guess I could say I remembered because there's a whole nother, I could ramble about growing up in the, in the hills of North central Pennsylvania, more white tailed deer than people. I mean, it's just beautiful up there. Um, but I remembered what green spaces can do for the human soul. And um, at that point, I consciously kind of went all in on saying wherever we are, my wife wants to plant and grow things. She's a certified garden designer. Like we can do it at our house. Oh, that's cool. Like we're gonna make we're gonna make a place for an oasis for human beings that also happens to be an oasis for for wildlife. Wow. And never look back. That's fascinating. Do you have a favorite? spot in your garden it moves throughout the year mm -hmm. um right now i like to start in the woodland because it's we got a bunch of mature trees that we were blessed with just like 90 100 year old oak trees and uh, there's some wow. linden trees out there there's a beach um and it's really shady which is really nice and under so under but underneath it you've got hydrangea bushes will tolerate it a lot of ferns will tolerate dry shade hostas just there's it's surprisingly lush out there and we left a path and you walk through like starting there and then like for the complete opposite the uh in, in the full sun around the other side of the house they have uh, it's like an english cottage type garden and it's just a riot of color right now just all kinds of pinks and yellows and things and the bees 
and every kind of bee, I still see insects, I don't know what they are on a daily basis, are just all humming on the pollen, and that brings in birds. Um, I had a hummingbird in my hand uh, two days ago because it came yes, to that garden. I saw that. That was awesome. She that hangs out in that garden all the time, and she went around the corner of the house and got stuck on our screen porch. <laughs> so it all, it all kind of, uh, it all ties, you know, it ties together. But yeah, it varies depending on the day, really. Yeah, man, I That's love awesome. a, I love a hummingbird. I don't know what it is about watching them, but they're mesmerizing to watch. They really are. Mm. What uh, one of the things you guys talk about on the story Warren is is like being an ally for for parents. Um, I'd like to ask the how for you as gardening or just the outdoors been that for you been an ally um for you in in your own spiritual walk in your own spiritual journey one of the the challenges in my daily walk or i guess a way to describe maybe all of the challenges is um is that I'll find myself, if, if I find myself having a bad day, if I find myself fighting anxiety or discouragement or anger, mm -hmm. um, it usually comes down to a way in which I've somehow pulled inside this little carapace where the only um, things I'm aware of are what I need or what I want or what's not right or slightly better but still exhausting what I can do and what I can't do to try to make things better, to get where I want and what I need. And that's a very limited story to live inside. Mm -hmm. And um, bird watching, this happens in the garden, but I, my dad was a bird watcher. So it happens. It's easier for me out in the woods um, is a connection to a much bigger story because you really, you really have to look if there's uh, something flying around or uh, waiting at the edge of the water, either that you've never seen before, or you can't quite get a, a glimpse of it, and you're curious enough, then you're, you're looking, you're trying to estimate size, like, all right, I see that, but did, did the yellow go all the way from the throat down to the feet or was it just right under the chin? Does that bird have a white ring around its eye? Wait a minute, there are two like that. What color are its legs? By the time you get done really looking, like you think you see a bird or an animal or a plant mm -hmm. and you saw it, but pull out a field guide and make yourself try to figure out which one it is. And you realize that you didn't really look at it. Mm. And God's creativity is crazy. The, the differences, the variations, and if you watch it long enough, then you see you know, the different birds have different personalities. I mean, hummingbirds remind me of fairies, both because they fly and they're cute and they're beautiful, but like the fairies in a lot of the tales, they're also always ticked off. Like they're always giving somebody what for. Like you know that if that hummingbird could have cursed our milk for trapping her in the porch, she would have. And <laughs> that's just what hummingbirds are like. And you know, Carolina wrens are very different. They're noisy and they're brash and they're not all that pretty, but they're friendly and they're curious. And, yeah. and, and it just goes on and on. Um, so being in the outdoors um, pulls me back out of, out of my little defeated um, self-focused shell and it reconnects me to, to God's story, mm. to, to a place where I'm, I'm, um, I'm important, but I'm not the point. And yes. there's something really restful about that. Man, that's good. That's so good. So when you're when you're reflecting, it seems like um, you get the opportunity to reflect in the outdoors, and you're you're able to to see God's creation. 
and to to let God's creation make help other things make sense. Um, you know, I, I've I've had that in my life. I felt like things become clearer. I gain a lot of clarity through being in the outdoors and through reflecting and and just seeing, just like you said, stepping back, getting a little bit of distance between us and whatever the problem is, whatever the situation is. Maybe it's uh, like what, what you were just talking about, but the clarity that comes through reflection and the, it, it seems like outdoors is a catalyst to that in, in, in your opinion. Would, would, would you feel that that would be the case? It, it absolutely is a, a catalyst. Um, interesting to me, you guys have put the word clarity um, because it probably ties to the idea of perspective. Um, I, I often think of it as coming as coming to a place of rest. Um, but but when you when I well uh, last year the family took a, a vacation which you can't do now but <laughs> we took a vacation to Shinkatig Island off the coast of Virginia. So it's uh, near a barrier island. There's a pair of them, Shinkatig and Hasatig. They had shorebirds, definitely things I've never seen before. And I was working really hard on vacation because that's dad's job and I wanted to work hard and my wife was working hard also. But there did come a point about three quarters of the way through where I was really tired and I was, I was just tired of myself. Like tired of being stressed and being snippier than I wanted to be. Tired of, um, tired of wanting to take joy in what God was providing to us, but always thinking about the next thing. And my wife, bless her heart, um, stuck the binoculars that she had remembered that I had not in my hands, and said, "We've got half an hour." We're going that way to the beach. You go that way to the salt marsh. <laughs> and gave me a kiss and a smile. And I went and I saw birds I'd never seen before and figured out what they were. That whole process I rambled about. And um, and, I, and I like applying the word clarity there because it helped me see how the stuff... I mean, you can tell yourself that the stuff that you're upset about and stressed about is not really important in the big picture. But usually I manage to do that in a way that just makes me feel more anxious because now I know I'm doing it wrong. And instead, this gave me a chance to, to feel, to get my heart around the idea that the stuff I had been stressed about 15 minutes ago was not important compared to the fact that we were out on vacation and that it was going to be fine. Um, so it was a very long way to say, yes, I agree. And, um, <laughs> and I'm grateful that you chose the word clarity because that helped me think through some of my experience in a way I hadn't before. I'm so thankful for those moments, you know, and they never seem to come inside though. Right? <laughs> <laughs> It it seems like uh, they they only come when we're we're outside we're at, we're we're out of the the car or we're we're outside of our homes or our workplaces and we get into uh, as we call them the outdoors the storied outdoors uh, those those moments seem to come way more often <laughs> than uh, than they would ever sitting uh, in a room for sure in front of a television or something right or on the couch. It's possible that we were created to uh, live in, in a garden or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> something along those lines. Yeah. Wow, that's a good point. That's so good. Um, man, thanks so much for some time this evening. I know it's uh, usually a challenge, especially with children, uh, to get a, a quiet moment. There's no telling where you've hidden yourself in your home. Uh, to get a quiet moment away from children. If your house is like mine, I actually came to my office at work so I could have some quiet. Uh, That's great. So uh, we're so thankful for you spending time with us. And uh, 
And I'm looking forward to uh, sharing your book with my kids. Uh, I read a little bit of the snippet on the website and made me laugh because the story was about the squirrel. Yeah. And uh, I have one, two, three. I have five hickory trees in my in my yard in my neighborhood. Oh, neat. And uh, that's a lot of hickory trees. That's a lot of leaves, and it's also a buffet for squirrels. <laughs> yeah. And they make an enormous mess. <laughs> So, uh, ergo, we have a cat, and we've interjected uh, conflict into the yard with the cat and the squirrels. And uh, my golden retriever gives it her best shot to try to catch the uh, the squirrel. She hasn't succeeded yet. Um, but I was laughing. I was like, I don't really like squirrels very much, but this one seems all right. <laughs> <laughs> James, how can people find your, your book? Um, if you search my name or you're in the Big Old Garden on Amazon, it usually comes up. Um, you can also, I have a direct link from my website at jamesdwhitmer.com. Yeah. And okay, we'll, great. We'll put that in our, um, in our show notes and some other areas on our website so we can point people to that, that beautiful book. Thank you. Yeah, it is beautiful. I got to work with a couple of amazing artists. Uh, Melissa Ellen Fink um, did the painting, um, mm. paintings, four paintings for the cover. And Beautiful. I got really lucky, and Joe Sutphin oh, um, awesome. did the interior illustration. Yeah, of Wing Feather, um, Notoriety, and he's been on a number of working on other projects. Um, so I was really blessed. So what is your next adventure, James? Thursday morning. <laughs> My alarm's going to go off before the sun is up, um, which I hate doing, but that's part of an adventure. And I'm going to meet a bunch of guys at our local park, and we're going to do a socially distanced outdoor boot camp style workout. And after a half hour of being outside and watching the sun come up and trying to sneak in bird watches between burpees, um, I'm going to come home <laughs> and I may pull some thistles out of the damp prairie that we're gradually trying to make out of a, a, a weedy patch. Um, and I'm probably going to say we have a tiny pond that is only a year and a half old. And I am not yet tired of watching the, the frogs and the tadpoles and the dragonflies. And so um, oh. by the time it's time to get ready for work, I will have, um, I, th I think I'll feel human. There we go. That sounds like a fantastic day. That's a great start to the day, man. Well, awesome. Well, again, thank you so much, James, for carving out some time to, to have a conversation with us. We look for, forward to seeing some more and hearing some more from Story Warden and maybe maybe some more stories from the big old garden at the big old house, man. They're coming. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Excellent. Well, um, we're looking forward to releasing these. Um, if, uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast and this conversation, um, and hey, leave us a, leave us a little review, show us a little love, uh, or better yet, share it with somebody. And uh, man, go write your own stories and share your own adventures right in the storied outdoors, even if it's in your backyard. <laughs>